In order to induce an EMF across a conductor, two things have to be true. The conductor has to be in motion, and it has to be moving so that at least a component of its motion is cutting across field lines. Now we see in our diagram our field lines are given by X's, which is into the page. So if I move my conducting rod into the page or out of the page, I'm simply moving parallel to those field lines and I'm not cutting across them. So A and B are not going to give us any induced EMF. Now what about C and D? C says if I move it towards X, so straight up, or D says towards Y, straight down. Now if this was an infinitely thin rod, there would be no induced EMF in those directions, but there is a tiny thickness to it. And that little span, that little thickness, the diameter of that pipe, is the length over which those charges will separate. Now length matters, so the further apart those charges can separate, the bigger the induced EMF. So it'll be an EMF, but it'll be very, very small. So for C and D, there'll be a tiny EMF induced because it is in fact cutting across field lines over its diameter if you move it in that direction. So we'll write that down as a little EMF is induced if you move it towards X or towards Y. E is our best answer. If I move this rod to the left or to the right, I'm cutting across a maximum number of field lines my length is as large as possible, and I would induce the largest EMF. So our best answer is E.